Starting off, I just wanted to get the name out there. So I can say some of my hoodies were not what I would use now. Uh, Like the quality of them would not be what I I thought that they were good hoodies back then. Yeah. But I would not use those and sell them at this point in my ventures, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Having a clothing brand and then also having a clothing brand that some people feel like they can't wear because it's labeled diversified Mm -hmm. where, you know, and I'm a black queer woman it's like i don't want people to feel like they can't wear it so i wanted to make sure that it was a universal not a universal but more so it's like um inviting for everyone Mm -hmm. you know so a lot of my beginning pieces and even my pieces now they're not i have like i plan to have a pride collection but like everything is not all rainbow Mm -hmm. you know you wouldn't know that um that the brand is is uh, a brand by you know a, a queer queer family um, mm-hmm. or and it's not hidden, but I don't think everything has to have you know big logos all on it or yeah. you know a lot of colors. A lot of people don't want to wear that, regardless Subtle, if they're queer or not. Fine. You know, is fine. Yeah. yeah, like it doesn't have to be all over the place. But like I most definitely am. This is a, also another announcement that I will have a um, a queer section um, on my website wow. now. Um, it's going to be focused on uh, most definitely identity and colors uh-huh. of, you know, she, he, they, them. Like, it's going to be um, a place, a safe place for people uh-huh. who want to represent and want to be loud and proud, they can go and buy something. That's amazing. So, um, that's amazing. That's something that I'm working on for very sure. Very nice. As well. I'm very happy to be also, you know, helping get your name out there too. Mm-hmm. I saw in the analytics, I, I have fans in Australia and Germany. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, you, you posted this on LinkedIn about, oh, what was the time frame? I remember uh, it was probably about February. So uh, you posted that I am a powerful brand. I will no longer allow denial letters take anything away from me and what I feel I am worth being a black lesbian woman. This that is very confident and can hold a conversation in any room scares a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, when you posted that and then you just. I mean, at least for myself, when it comes to posting about your episode, for example, it's mm-hmm. like, okay, I want to read the co- read the caption a couple times, make sure my grammar is good, make sure this mm-hmm. all makes sense. When you read that and just sent it out to the world, how did you feel? Um, I feel like there's a lot of people that are are like are in positions like myself mm-hmm. that you know, I don't want them to feel like because they didn't get that call back or they didn't get that job they thought they needed or they wanted or they yeah. were supposed to get to stop their journey, their journey, yeah. you know? Um, sometimes when you feel like you are deserving of something and it doesn't go your way, you feel like you're worthless. It, and, and I've come across that before. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to snap out of it. Cause I'm just like, okay, what are you thinking? What are you talking about? Yeah. Like you have a lot of stuff going on for yourself. Yeah. There's a reason why you didn't get that promotion. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the reason why they're not calling you back. There's a reason why that interview went outstanding, but you still didn't get the position. You know, so I, I start to think like, I think some people are intimidated by my by my grind, by mm-hmm. my by what I can bring. You know, and mm-hmm. I think that my voice is really strong. Yeah, and which is super funny, <laughs> but I mean, I I like to be seen as strong, but yeah. really. All I do is laugh all day. I, like, I remember that too from my coworkers. <laughs> yeah. all, all I do is laugh all day. I, t- I like to laugh. I like to talk. I like to joke. Um, anybody that's close to me, we laugh a lot, mm-hmm. you know. But, you know, when I'm at work or if I'm in a business setting, I'm going to be about my business. Yeah. Because it's my livelihood. It's where I'm, it's how I was raised. Like you handle business and you have a good time at the same time. I mean, that's the best way to do you it. You know? Too. So, but. Getting denial letters every week or, like, not getting interviews at all for positions that I feel like I most definitely qualify for. Yeah. It, it raises a few eyebrows for me. Yeah. But then it's also, I'm like, God has a bigger plan for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not supposed to be working for a brand with their own ideas and putting it out to the world and using that. I'm supposed to be doing it for myself. Yeah. 
So you're not, um, you're an idea woman. You're not you know yeah. want to follow a pathway that's already set. Yeah. So like to be honest, like I'm so happy that I'm getting those denial letters because uh, it's pushed me. Yeah. It's pushed me to go further. It's pushed me not to quit. Mm-hmm. So you know, to me, you know, I get in my feelings sometimes, but then at the end of the day, I'm just like, you know what? What are you gonna do about it? Like what are what are you gonna do about? You gonna go in there and demand it? You gonna go in there yeah. and say no? I am I'm gonna take this job. I'm gonna work for you. I'm gonna make you millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be making a fraction of that, and still living, you know, mediocre. Mm-hmm. Or am I gonna use that fuel to put in diversified mm-hmm. and to become a multi million dollar brand and live my life in Calabasas? You know. No, <laughs> you know my my partner faces denial letters also with her profession. So it's like trying to tell her like it's okay. Well, there are other options out there. There's other avenues we can take. And then um, I remember her saying one time, "It's easy for me to say that. It's easy for her mom to say that because a we're outside of her industry. And then b you know I'm a man and she's a woman, so." She, I remember her saying mm-hmm. that in tears. It's like mm-hmm. you, know, you, you might have some other advantages that she doesn't have, which it's like, as the you know biased person that I am, especially with her, it's mm-hmm. like, no, I mean, I want to say no, but in reality, it's like, yeah, that's that's she might be true. It might be tr- might be true. Yeah, fortunately, uh, but what? Obviously, this was in February, so I didn't really. That wasn't really your turning point to start creating diversified. Mm-hmm. What was that? Because yeah, you had. Uh, tell me what that time frame was like. It kind of still yeah. was, to it, be it honest. It was still okay. Because I was applying for positions when I started this brand, mm-hmm. um, and never got a bite on much. You know, I've been working for my nine to five. I've been an employee for about fourteen years, and. Um, I had a small break, a, a year and a half break, but other than that, I've been a, a loyal um, employee mm-hmm. for 14 years. Mm-hmm. So to not get interviews and not to get interviews in my direct field, yeah, um, to be denied certain programs that I most definitely qualify for, and for people to not really look at my resume, like I use all that, yeah, for fuel. Yeah. For myself, hmm. you know, regardless of the situation. Yeah. You know, in the interviews I go in, of course, I say, OK, I'm a black woman. I have locks. You know, is that going to not give me the interview? Mm-hmm. Is that not going to give me the job? And that's just the society that we live in today. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm a black woman. I'm an ex professional basketball player. Um, maybe they feel like I'm a threat. Maybe I'm overqualified for this job, Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, I just, I'm like Michael Jordan at this point. Anything (laughs) that someone says or looks at me wrong is going to be motivation for the future for me. Like, I have that competitive spirit for sure. 